Hi there, I'm Andrea Lapomi, and this is video one in a series for Ethics Mini Roles and Boundaries. Ethics Mini Roles and Boundaries is a massage therapy continuing education course that focuses on NCB TMB Standard 5. You can go to confidentmassage.com to find payment instructions, quiz instructions, and also to download your own copy of the text that corresponds with this video series. Introduction. Oh, boundaries. In my humble opinion, you're one of the more fascinating constructs having to do with human relationships, constantly morphing, expanding, and contracting, obvious today and elusive tomorrow. As massage therapists and body workers, you glorious boundaries provide us with inexhaustible challenges as new interpersonal situations present themselves on a regular basis. Sometimes you're loved, sometimes hated, but always necessary. How should we handle dual relationships while in the office? When is it appropriate for us to make product and treatment recommendations? Better yet, how about lifestyle choice recommendations? What's our motivation for staying vigilant against the brain-confusing, life-complicating qualities of transference and countertransference? I've been a massage therapist for over a decade now, and I still find myself revisiting the topic of healthy boundaries rather frequently. I'm guessing this is true for a lot of us, regardless of how long we've been up to our elbows in massage lubricant. Thanks so much for joining me as we embark on this action-packed exploration of the NCB TMB's Standard of Practice 5, Roles and Boundaries. I hope we all learn a few things and share a few smiles along the way. Many of these chapters start out with a quote of NCB TMB's standards of practice. Typically they'll use his slash her. Um, in my own text, I prefer to use their so that it's a more inclusive uh, manner of covering course material. Just keep that in mind. In his or her professional role, the certificate or applicant for certification shall recognize his or her personal limitations and practice only within these limitations. That's quoting the NCB TMB standards of practice. I'll admit it, I'm limited. I have no idea how to ride a horse, shear a sheep, or make a Moscow mule. You'd be hard pressed to find me speaking fluent Japanese. And if for one moment you ever cared for humanity, you will never request my rendition of Depeche Mode's personal Jesus for bagpipes. I'm limited in my professional life too. Sometimes I suffer from chronic shoulder issues and irritated tendon tendencies that necess necessitate breaks throughout my work days and on occasion, modifications to certain massage techniques I choose to employ. At this point in my life, I have no interest in performing traditional Thai massage on clothed clients or chair massage on clients clad in furry animal costumes. I'm aware of my preferences, physical abilities, and skill set, and I aim to advertise, converse, and perform my job functions while being mindful of these conditions and attributes. In short, I'm aware of my shortcomings. So how does this apply to you? Only you can answer that question, but I'm guessing there's a modality, technique, or continuing education avenue of some sort that you haven't yet pursued during your wonderful lifetime. If a client asks you for abdominal work, stretching, deep neck work, anything you don't feel adequately educated about or experienced with, and you doubt you'd be able to perform the requested technique correctly, safely, and professionally, you are obligated to politely refrain from attempting said work. As massage therapists, we also need to think long-term and take good care of ourselves mentally, physically, emotionally, and financially. We stand a better chance of avoiding personal injuries of all sorts by being honest with ourselves about our own strengths and limitations. Personally, I've suffered from a handful of overwork injuries over the years and have had to miss multiple days of work because of them. I've had to cancel appointments with clients, 
and pay a physical therapist in an attempt to remedy these situations. There were multiple, oh crap, moments when I wondered if my massage days were over. Trust me when I say, an ounce of prevention truly is worth a pound of cure. So what's the worst that can happen when we tempt fate and forget the meaning of personal limitations? Take your pick. Physical injuries to ourselves and clients, lawsuits, bad press, negative reviews, financial hardship, damage to the reputation of the massage therapy profession as a whole, more stress than we know what to do with, etc. Our egos have no place in the treatment room. Limit personal liability by being mindful of personal limitations. We have a question here from somebody who is taking this course. I just got a job as a massage therapist at a spa. They have hot stone massage on the menu. I haven't done a hot stone massage since massage school two years ago. Help. Well, thanks for your question. So, okay. Clearly, although you have had some basic training in hot stone massage, you don't feel comfortable doing it now, and it would stand to reason that since two years has passed since you had any training in it, that you're probably due for a refresher. So, um, first things first, you'd hate for the receptionist at this new spa job to book a hot stone massage for you, and then you're caught off guard, the client shows up, you realize it's a hot stone massage, and you're like, ah! Um, so first things first, you're going to have to communicate with your employer so that the spa um, either makes training you or retraining you in their hot stone massage protocol a priority, which would be wonderful, um, and also that the receptionists don't book you for that service. So maybe they can take you off of the booking software for the hot stone massage service specifically. That way they can reactivate you for that service when you are trained and feeling good about your skills. So most spas will provide some sort of um, in-house training. Maybe they'll bring somebody in to train. Maybe they'll have a lead massage therapist train or even some of the other massage therapists that you work with. So that's a fabulous idea. If if you work at a smaller facility and in-house training isn't an option for you, I would encourage you to, if, if this is possible, find um, a local hands-on course. With something like hot stone massage, you're going to want hands-on training and hands-on practice, hands-on experience. Um, you could read books about it all day long, but I don't think that's going to give you the education or the confidence level that you need to perform at your new job. So. If possible, seek out a live hands-on hot stone massage course. Um, if you can receive continuing education credits for it, fabulous. If not, no biggie. What's important right now is that you receive the training so that you're not going to injure your clients, you're not going to injure yourself, and you're going to be able to um, provide the hot stone massage service without uh, <laughs> falling apart at the seams, I guess, would be a good way to describe what happens when we try to do something that we're not comfortable doing at all. So, okay, you've taken your course. Um, if, if there's not a local hands-on course available to you and the spa itself is not providing education, you may have to look to um, people in your peer group. You may have to travel to find a hands-on course, that's an option too, but if you do have any um, friends in town who are massage therapists that have solid hot stone massage skills, then talk to them about maybe doing an exchange where they can show you how they do it, the two of you can work on each other and practice techniques, and you know, if it's, if it's worth uh, offering them some money or offering them some services in exchange, that's an option too. We don't want to take advantage of our peers and just assume everyone's available to help us without being compensated. So um, those are good ways to handle that. So good luck. <laughs> and practice, practice so that you feel comfortable and you don't feel like people are paying for a service that um, you're ill-equipped to provide. 
All right. Influential relationships. In his or her professional role, the certificate or applicant for certification shall recognize his or her influential position with the client and not exploit the relationship for personal or other gain. That's quoting the NCB TMB standards of practice. In all honesty, a lot of us would probably a lot <laughs> excuse me. In all honesty, a lot of us probably wish we were more influential with our clients. Imagine a world where we recommend booking ahead or scheduling a recurring monthly appointment or purchasing and using a helpful self self-care tool of some sort. And every single client agrees with us and does exactly as we suggest without question. Our books would fill themselves, our clients would feel fabulous, and our wallets would overflow with so much Andrew Jackson, we wouldn't know what to do with that much hot eyebrow action. But here in the real world, massage clients run the gamut from highly skeptical and deeply budgety to epically pliable and as spendy as the day is long. We should be especially mindful of folks at the latter end of the spectrum when it comes to making suggestions in the treatment room. Before upselling, discussing retail purchases, or booking future appointments, we are obligated to ask ourselves, is this suggested course of action in this client's best interest? Am I putting this, client, this client's therapeutic needs ahead of my own financial needs? Am I putting this client's therapeutic needs ahead of my ego's need to book more appointments or sell more stuff or be the most popular massage therapist in all the land? If the answer to every one of these questions isn't a resounding yes, it's probably a good time to examine what motivates us to do the work that we do. And oh yeah, about that whole personal gain thing, financial gain counts as personal gain. So do other forms of material gain, romantic gain, babysitting gain, narcissistic gain, and guru complex gain. That's a good one. Avoid use and abuse by allowing the golden rule to be your gatekeeper. Always treat others as you would like to be treated. The golden rule. And we have a question here. I have a long-term client who is a lovely, trusting person. She will ask me about some of the pricier menu options I offer, and she says she is going to go online and book them frequently. The thing is, she responds best to light, relaxation-style massage. What should I do? So I'm guessing from this question that she's perhaps, um, that she hasn't yet booked them, but she keeps talking about that she's going, going to go online and perhaps book um, a deep tissue massage or like a more aggressive technique that you already know because you've had this client on your table for a very long time. Um, you already know that she responds better to lighter relaxa relaxation style massage techniques. So um, this, I think this is actually a, a common thing that happens. And this is a good example of um, where you could run into potential problems with having an influential relationship with this client. Um, because it sounds like she would be likely to say yes, like she, she obviously respects you a lot as a professional, she trusts you, she enjoys her time with you, and she enjoys her treatments. Um, so you're in a position where whatever you recommend, there's a pretty good chance that she's going to schedule those services. So obviously open, honest communication is uh, your best course of action here. That's the ethical way to handle this. So what you can do when she indicates she's interested in, let's just say, a deep tissue massage to keep things simple, what you can say is, um, uh, you know, what are, your, what are your goals? Let's talk about your goals. And perhaps she just wants to try something new and this item happens to have a higher price point. You could, uh, you could discuss with her, you know what? Your muscles respond really well to the techniques we've been using so, so you can continue to get the most out of your treatments, why don't we try this? And it's good to be flexible in these situations. If you have add-ons available, uh, like, like hot stones, like essential oils and aromatherapy, um, even cold stones or steam towels, something like that, where you can enhance different types of massage. So, 
if this client is feeling kind of like she's stuck with the basic relax relaxation massage and she wants to try something new, um, perhaps suggest those items. And a lot of times, sometimes we include them in a service at no additional charge. Sometimes they are uh, an additional fee and it's up to you how you want to do that. In that case, it sounds like she'd be happy to pay for those things and if you do believe in your heart of hearts that those would be beneficial to her because she you've seen her um, achieve great results with the relaxation massage techniques go for it if you feel that they're benefiting her and you're not just doing it just to add a five or ten dollar um, upcharge onto her bill another option would be Maybe it's time to look at your menu and think about, you know, what other services that are predetermined services. Let's say you have a basic, uh, like a basic relaxation massage, and then perhaps you have a deluxe relaxation relaxation massage that includes all of those hot stones and aromatherapy and all the things we just discussed. And of course, that would, um, as would be expected, would have a higher price point then you're being really upfront and giving her options that would probably, it sounds like, um, be something that's still going to be like of maximum benefit to her and maybe even more benefit. Maybe she needs a little hot stone uh, massage in her life and she doesn't know what she's missing. So that would be my advice in that situation. Um, open, honest communication, being flexible and coming up with some ideas, whether you want to include them in the price of the existing service or you want to add them to your menu as add-ons. Or my preferred method is actually to come up with um, a deluxe version of a massage modality that already includes all of those elements. It keeps things simple. You're not, people don't feel like you're um, nickel and diming them and they don't have to think about money things when they're in a setting where they just want to get away from the real world and relax. I'm trying to keep these videos around half an hour in length, so forgive me for <laughs> looking at the clock. All right. And then of course, you know, I, I don't like to be cliche, but we, it's always worth being reminded of the golden rule, right? Always treat others as you would like to be treated. This is the simplest way to keep in mind that we are truly here to provide a service, to serve our clients. And as such, we hold a lot of power. And if we're providing our services in an ethical manner, where we're respecting boundaries and we're constantly aware of them and assessing them. Um, we just, we have so much power to just like make somebody's life uh, for that moment in time that they share with us. Just a, wonder, a wonderful, pure, trusting, and um, just all around great experience. So you can never go wrong by reminding yourself of the golden rule. Always treat others as you would like to be treated. Let's see if we have any other questions here. And of course, if any of you ever have any questions that you'd like to forward to me, you can email me at helpinghands at confidentmassage.com and I will get back to you as soon as possible. All right, no other questions on this one. I am doing these videos in a series. So um, this is video one in a series in this course. I also have a few other courses up at confidentmassage.com and there are video series that correspond with all of those as well. There's also downloadable course content that corresponds with the video series and you can also find um, quiz information and payment information at confidentmassage.com as well. So feel free to forward any questions to me that you have. Again, helping hands at confidentmassage.com. And thanks so much for tuning in, everybody. I will see you in the next video. Bye.